Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today I have the last installment of the little mini d series of the custom knives he sent to me. This one happened to be my personal favorite, so I saved it for last to show you guys. This one here is none other than the Gareth Bull Shimwari. Now, before I go any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this absolutely incredible handmade custom knife from Gareth Bull. We have an overall length of 7.52 inches with a blade length coming in at 3.25 inches and a blade width right at 1 inch. We have a blade thickness of 120 thousandths with a blade material of M390, a drop point style blade, a very nice hollow grind, and a handle length coming in at 4.27 inches. We have a handle thickness of 514 thousandths on this guy with a handle width right under 1 inch coming in at 920 thousandths and a handle material of carbon fiber with a liner lock locking mechanism and a user of a right hand only tip up carry a weight coming in at 2.7 ounces and a price on this guy right around twelve hundred dollars but boy i gotta say like i said this is my favorite of the three that he sent me just because you guys know i love front flippers and i really love the overall design language of gareth bull very elegant very classy just very, very attractive in general. Now let's take a look at some size comparisons here. This is slightly small. Well, no, it's really not. It looks smaller. There's something about the Shamori that you just expect it to be a three-inch blade and a smaller knife, but it's really not. It's it's very close to the other two. Uh, let's compare it to the same two that we've been comparing the other ones to, and I have one extra size comparison and another knife that we're going to compare a little more to this knife as we go through the review in terms of action. Um, but here we have your Benchmade Bug Out as well as your Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And as you can see, this is just about the exact same. It really is the exact same length um, as the Benchmade Bug Out. And even in terms of handle size, blade size, uh, really, we'll just take that Paramilitary 2 out of there. Um, spot on comparison to the Benchmade Bug Out. Now let's get in to this blade and talk about it a little more because what you have here is just a stunningly gorgeous drop point style blade uh very nice and very deep hollow grind this kind of reminds me um of a conigarius hollow grind uh very very deep and just a very quality grind um i think if uh when they when you start seeing these uh mini ariases you're going to see grinds very similar to this. It just stays thin for such a long time. And I was really actually surprised to see that the behind the edge thickness on this guy was 14 thousandths. Now, of course, 14 thousandths is still incredibly slicey, and I have absolutely no issue with that. i just feeling it. I felt like it was going to be thinner. Um, but nonetheless, an incredibly impressive grind, one that is going to stay razor sharp for you for your entire life unless you just break the blade in half. Um excellent edge and a front flipper area that is just absolutely perfect on this guy now the detent has a lot to do with that um but we're going to talk more about that when we get to the action and i have another gareth bull to compare it to not a custom um but it's going to be a pretty interesting comparison i think when we get to the action portion but now going into the handle and ergos uh ergos are extremely comfy on this guy you have contoured uh hand rubbed carbon fiber rubbed down to a flawless finish um incredibly smooth all of the screws and hardware are kind of inset below the actual carbon fiber so there's nothing sticking out above the carbon fiber and it just feels so so good in hand even that pocket clip i love the way gareth bull does their pocket clip it, it is perfect in my opinion gives you a nice deep carry feel but an elegant milled look that reverse clip up there holding it in it's just incredibly attractive and the way they finish off the end of the clip eliminates any hot spot or any aggravation you would get from holding the knife in hand so every bit of attention paid to this pocket clip and it really does show on the knife um, in terms of everything else, the access to the liner lock is just fantastic. As you can see, it's notched out really good. You kind of have some contouring in there for your thumb. And when you break this liner lock, guillotine. Absolute guillotine. 
So, so, so much fun to close and open this blade. And we're going to go right into the action because the action is definitely the most impressive part of this knife. Everything is really impressive when you're talking to custom, especially of this caliber by this type of maker. But the action really is. This is the bench made for a front flipper when it comes to the actual expectations of how a front flipper should feel. Um, the detent is perfect for this knife. Now, if I shook it hard enough, you can shake the blade out. That's really kind of a silly test in a lot of ways, especially when you're talking a custom-made front flipper because the detent has to be just right for an effortless deployment, but also keep the blade from just falling out. It's obviously not falling out. The, the detent works plenty good enough to keep the blade from falling out. But when you put your thumb on this front flipper tab and just start to push it back, oh, so, so good. My thumb even kind of slipped on that one and it still was a successful, successful deployment. Pushing a little harder, flies out. As you saw already, it is easily reach around approved. And this one is a very, very smooth one on the reach around. Effortless reach around deployment. Um, and I'm done saying reach around for the rest of this video, rest assured. <laughs> but it just, it is effortless deployment. It is so buttery smooth. This really is guys, I know I use the term buttery and glassy a lot. This knife here, if I was to pick one knife to, to describe what buttery and what glassy feels like, this is it. Buttery on the clothes. It's, it's like the ball bearings. This knife is running on bearings. It's like the bearings are just running on glass on this. You feel nothing. You hear nothing other than the thwack. There's no friction anywhere in the inner workings when the knife is being deployed. Um, just absolutely incredible action on this guy. And now what I have to compare it with here um, is the Gareth Bowl Drop Mira. Now... I've said plenty of times before, I think this Mira is one of, if not the best production knife ever made by Wii Knives. The action is buttery. It is, as you can see, let me close both of these knives for you. Very nice, very smooth. It's, it's actually a little smoother. I, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't, the action makes it look a little smoother. What you have is a very slight difference. There's, there's actually kind of a weird little rattle in this and I don't, I'm not worried about it because the knife works fine and nothing's loose, very solid lockup in every single way. But listen, you kind of hear it, it, it almost sounds like a rattle and that could just be how smooth the knife is. I don't know. To be honest, I've never taken this knife apart because it was stupid, buttery, drop shut smooth out of the box. And I had no reason to take it apart. So I'm not going to mess with a good thing. Um, but the blade flies out. Effortless deployment. Um, and what you have here is that same effortless deployment, but the, the difference is in the detent and the overall feel. I will say the overall feel is very different, but you have a lot of similarities. You have the pocket clip here. And you have the pocket clip here. They did amazing things to keep this similar to the custom. Now, there is still a little difference. I'm not going to say that this action and this feel is exactly the same as the action and feel on this custom Shamari. We're also talking two completely different models. But I thought since they were both Gareth Bull, it was worth the comparison. Um, but I got to say, this here, it, it, this is very impressive. Now that I've handled the actual custom and have a custom to compare it to. Uh, very, very interesting comparing these two. I do wish we would make more of these or Drop would make more of these. Drop has now been bought out by another company. Um, and who knows, keep your fingers crossed. It would be a dream if they made more of these because I think they would sell extremely well. Everyone still wants them. Why they didn't make a second run of them. I think that's just because Drop got out of the knife game. But damn, we need more of them because they're absolutely amazing. That's how much I like this knife and I thought it was worth bringing out to compare to the actual true production. Now, I'm not taking away from this knife though. Please don't, don't put those words in my mouth because I'm not taking away from it. Um, but the action is similar, but the difference you feel in hand is the overall fit and finish and balance. The balance is a little more balanced on this knife and the way that blade shuts, the sound of that detent. Listen to this detent. Just, it, it's, it's like 
glass nicking glass. It is so, so good. Just right. The fact that this was made by hand is just absolutely incredible. I mean, I'm sure there was a little machining involved, but um, this is a true custom, and it is by far and away my favorite of the three series. Um, I really do enjoy this one. If I ever bought a custom, which is rather unlikely, but who knows if I ever hit the lottery or came into a lot of money, I may consider it. But there we go, guys. This here is the Gareth Bull Shamwari. And now my last question for you in this little mini series is which one would you take between the Gareth Bull Shamwari, the Jason Guthrie Scout, and the Bradley Moraes Vector? Which one would you take home? Now, obviously, unfortunately, I won't be doing a giveaway with any of these three knives, but I would love to hear your opinion on that. Which one do you like more? Which one would you take if you had the opportunity to have any one of these three? I hope you guys really enjoyed this little mini series. I know customers are a little out of most of everyone's wheelhouse, but it's still worth touching on and learn a little more about extremely talented designers and the abilities they have to craft such beautiful pieces. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.